All right, what's up guys? A lot of y'all are probably really excited because Synology has finally released the M.2 and 10 gigabit expansion card for their Synology NASes. All right, so why is this card so sought after and so awaited? Well, currently, most of their larger NASes only have one PCIe expansion slot. That means that people would either have to choose between having an M.2 SSD cache or having a 10 gigabit card in there because most of the larger models actually don't even come with 10 gigabit cards in them, which I've always found kind of weird. And so Synology kind of forced you into three separate categories if you needed to increase your performance. You could buy their M.2 adding card, which would mean you would not be able to have a 10 gigabit card in there, but you could have an incredibly fast read write cache in there. This was mostly for people who didn't need 10 gigabit but could bond their four one gigabit connections because realistically they have a ton of people in an office all hitting it, all having a bunch of random transactions on the NAS. Then the next category you could have been in was somebody who just needed sequential performance. This is like if you have maybe one big transfer going on at once and you really wanted the 10 gigabit card in there so you would not be limited by the 120 megabytes per second that is capped by a one gigabit connection. And then the final category you could have been in was if you really needed both SSD caching and a 10 gigabit card. Well, in that case, you would have to start giving up actual drive bays to put in two and a half inch SSDs, which still do not have that good of performance comparatively. And so Synology kind of forced you to compromise between these things. And so it actually took a really long time for this card to come out. And I actually think I know why. And so if you look at this card, it just so happens that it was released at the exact same time as Synology is releasing their own M.2 NVMe SSDs. And so you can kind of see there that they might have been waiting till they got the contract through and were able to start having a manufacturer producing Synology branded M.2 SSDs. And so I think that's part of the reason why they were holding off was so that they could release these all together because the technology for creating an M.2 card and a 10 gigabit card on the same PCIe bus is really not that complicated. It's been done many times and a bunch of manufacturers are already producing them. All right, so this is not yet available on any sites. The only place that I could find it was BH Photo and it's currently got a price of 250 US dollars and an expected release date of July 1st. So it's really not that far along, but it's gonna be fairly expensive. And so the card comes with two M.2 slots that can either fit a 2280 or a 22110 M.2 SSD. And so you've got the option to see either one of those lengths, but M.2 drives come in a lot of different lengths. So before buying, make sure they're gonna fit in your NAS. All right, and then for the network port, it only comes with a single RJ45 10G base T network card. I was actually really surprised by this. I thought for sure when they did actually release this card that it would come along with an SFP plus model as well so that people were, would be able to buy either one of the cards depending on their needs. SFP plus is the standard for big networking gear where a lot of these servers are going to be housed. And it also allows for a lot further transmission lines for certain use cases. So I thought for sure they would release both because SFP plus is actually a lot easier and cheaper to manufacture because you do not need to deal with nearly as much noise. And that's why you can see that over optical, there's already 100 gigabit cards because using light, you have a lot less noise to deal with. And so the signals do not have to be nearly as processed. Another nice thing about SFP Plus is it has a much lower power draw and therefore heat output, which when you're including M.2 SSDs, you really want to limit your heat output because those things can get really hot, which is why you see these massive heat sinks on there to make sure that the SSDs do not overheat. All right, and so what's the use case for this card? Well, it's really for big office environment where you need both a 10 gigabit connection and you need to be able to handle a lot of random read and writes to your Synology. You basically use the RJ45 10 gigabit card to allow yourself up to 1.2 gigabytes per second transfer. That's optimal, I've not seen numbers that high. 
and you use the M.2 slots as an SSD cache. Since there's two of them, you can either set them up in a RAID 0 configuration, which is only read only, or a RAID 1 configuration where they mirror each other for failover, where you can actually have a read write cache. Though I would not recommend using a read write cache right now. I've heard some horror stories about people losing data. And so I would recommend sticking with a read only cache unless you have a really good use case for it. One thing you're not going to be able to do with this card, unless Synology fixes it in a software update, is use it as its own pool. Currently, you can only use M.2 SSDs as SSD caching on a Synology. There is no option to have a pure SSD pool using the M.2 slots, which I think is them really just protecting their own very expensive flash station line because NVMe based M.2 SSDs can have insane performance and two of them in a RAID 0 configuration could actually pretty easily rival four or five SSDs all rated together. And so I think they're protecting their more expensive lines from people just buying these cards and using them to get insane performance by forcing people up to the more expensive lines. So I hope in a future software update they'll fix that because right now that would be a great use case for people who don't really want to deal with caching and the issues that come with it and would like to be able to have a part of their storage pool for incredibly fast performance. For me personally, I'm not planning on buying this card. I simply do not have a use case for it because I've actually built out an R630 free NAS build with four SSDs in a RAID 0 configuration essentially and it is incredibly fast and I can use it for video editing. And so basically any of my high access files that I need are on there. And then for offloading, I stick it all on my Synology for long-term storage. So with that set up right now, I really don't have a place where I need this card. And I'm actually really excited they finally built out this card. I personally might not have a use case for it, but I know there's a lot of business cases where this would be an incredibly helpful thing because it's gonna finally allow for much higher IOPS for people who are having a lot of users accessing data and need to get over gigabit speeds for that. And so I really think this is mostly a business-based thing. Very few consumers are actually gonna get any additional performance out of this unless you're streaming about 70 different Plex libraries all at the same time. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Hope this was informative. And have a good one. Bye.